fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! I'll silver! Boy! When the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached a telegraph station, the last one before Canyon City, they left Dan Reed, the masked man's 14-year-old nephew... With the fellow in charge. And uh, you're to stay here till the masked man comes back. That's uh, all I know about it, Daniel. Oh, I don't mind. I never saw a telegraph before. You mean to say you can really talk with this little button? <laughs> well, not exactly talk. You push the key down and it makes a click. Then you let her up and there's another click. Like this. You savvy? Oh, is that all there is to it? Well... When you heard that click, the men all along the telegraph line heard the same click. Well, how could they? They got an instrument like this, too. It's electricity that does it. Now, if I make the clicks like this, that's called a dot. And if I make them like this, then it's called a dash. There's a code worked out. Each letter having a combination of dots and dashes. Oh, the Lone Ranger told me something about how a telegraph works. Golly, it sure is wonderful the way science is doing things. Daniel, when the construction crew gets done with the job at noon tomorrow, Canyon City will be hooked right up with the big cities in the east. Why, thing can happen way in the east, and, and we'll know about it inside an hour. Jeb? Mm, yep. What's wrong? Hmm? Who, who said anything was wrong? Well, there is something wrong, isn't there? Oh, go on with you now. You, you're just guessing. Oh, I'm not guessing. We were east to here when the Lone Ranger was talking to a man in one of these stations. Dan, I don't know if you appreciate what a lucky young'un you are. Oh, sure I do. Traveling with the Lone Ranger. Jeb, you're changing the subject. The Lone Ranger heard something in the other station, and then he and Tom will change our course and came here as fast as we could. He left me with you and went on to Canyon City. Oh, he just wanted to talk to Tom Case, and that's all. Who's Tom Case? He's the boss of the construction job. They're stringing the wires to Canyon City. Was Tom Case having trouble? Huh? Now, now, why in thunder should you if ask... If the Lone you... Ranger didn't expect trouble, he would have taken me with him. He wouldn't have left me here with you. Dan, 
As a matter of fact, this construction's been nothing but trouble from the outset. Them buzzards that run the Rocky Hall outfit are making it. Who? Rocky Hall Construction Outfit. They want the job of stringing the wires from Canyon City on to the west. Oh. If Tom Case and our gang don't set the last of them poles in Canyon City by noon tomorrow, the chances are Case will lose out on the rest of the contract. Oh, if Tom Case and the others are near Canyon City, what are those men out there doing? Huh? Oh, oh, they're just putting the finishing touches to the wires that's already in place and uh, keeping watch. They... Great day in the morning. It's Indians. Dozens of them. Let me hit that window. <coughs> hey, fellas. Look out. Redskins. Give me that gun, Dan. I'll fire a signal. They see the Indians. The ornery Redskins. Let me have a gun. I can help. Get your head down. Keep it down. I'll try to single Tom Case. Maybe he'll hear and come right... Uh, Jeb. Jeb. Shut that... Shut that... The window. Yes, sir. Now, what can I do? Tell me. Signal. Tom. Tom Case. Tom. Uh... Jeb. Jeb, speak to me. Tell me how to signal him. Just tell me what to do. Well, Jeb, can't you speak? Oh, Jeb, if you could only tell me the code. <laughs> again. Doesn't that signal mean anything to you, Case? Not a thing. I never heard Jeb send in that style. Three tap again. Hmm. Tonto, I told Dan very little about the telegraph. You suppose... A signal of three. Tonto, we told Dan that three smudge fires or three gunshots was a signal that help was needed. Three of anything. He's signaling us. You mean your your nephew is signaling that way? I'm sure of it. Come on. But why don't Jeb send the signal? Perhaps for the same reason that help is needed. Get your men together and follow me. Hey, boys! Come on, mount up! Who's Silver? Come, Scout! You go on ahead, Case. Follow us. We'll be with you. Ready, big fella. Come on, Silver! Come on! Meanwhile, a few miles to the east, the men who had been working near the station fought their best... They had scant shelter when the Indians first rode down on them. Their sheltering wagons would be useless in short moments as the Indians were riding in a circle, firing from the saddle. While the battle raged outside the station, Dan stayed by the brass instrument, repeating the only signal he knew in the faint hope that it would reach the Lone Ranger, be understood, and bring the help so badly needed. Well, if only Jeb still lived, he could send the message. If he could just tell me what to say. What was that? One of the telegraph poles blew up. Those dirty redskins, they've blown up one of our telegraph poles. There goes another. Lawson, I'm going to rush him and try to stop him. Don't be a fool, Kerry. Fool or no fool, they can't blow up our work like that. Look at them. They're fixing to blow up another one. Stay here. That's an order, Kerry. Lawson, you can boss me on the job. Of You'll be killed, Kerry. I'd sooner die than see all our work blown up. Will you boys help me rush him? No. How about you? It's suicide. Stay here. They'll have the next blast set in a minute. It's too far to stop him with a six gun. I'm going. Hey, they're coming. Who? Why, it's a Lone Ranger. Tom Case and the men. How'd they know about it? Look, him? the Indians have seen them too. They're running away. You little hyenas. Look at them turn tail and run. Well, Mr. Case, looks like you and the mess man, the boys here, arrived just in time. Yes, we couldn't have held out much longer. How did it happen, Larson? Did you have guards posted around the camp as I ordered? Well, no, I figured we needed every available hand for the job. I don't give orders to hear myself talk. Them redskins must have had everything well planned. First thing they did was to drill old Jeb so he couldn't wire for help. Well, you mean... You mean they killed him? Yes, sir. He, he died before we could do anything for him. The Indians were planting more blasting powder to blow up the poles well, than you... That's strange. Ah, Indians not use blasting powder. What, what do you mean? I'm not sure the men who attacked you were Indians. Not Indians? Then who could they now, be? This isn't Indian territory. Ah, that's right. Indian land west of here. West, huh? Did you hear that, Larson? When my surveyors were charting this route to Canyon City, you advised me to approach from the west to avoid the Redskins. I must have made a mistake, sir. Don't make any mistakes again, or I'll get a new gang boss. Yeah. All right, boys, back to work. Hey, Come on. We'll go to the telegraph office and look around. Yeah, I want to look after Jeb. 
Oh, blast Larson. If he had had guards posted, I'm wagering all this wouldn't have happened. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come on. Leaving Tom Case inside the telegraph office with Jeb, the Lone Ranger and Tonto met Dan and then walked around the tiny shack in search of a clue to the raider's true identity. Is that the window, Dan? Yes. That's where Jeb was standing when he was hit. Oh, him make easy target. Did you see who shot him? Oh, yes. He, he was over this way, back of this rock. I'll show you. I saw him out and right away. I see. He looked like he was creeping up on the house to kill Jeb from behind when he appeared at the window. Here. He was right here. Oh, here tracks. The moccasin prints. Ah, here's his knee print, too. Golly, that's right. I remember he was kneeling when he drew aim. Him wear patch on knee, shaped like diamond. Here, design and print. Yes, Kimosabe. We shouldn't have trouble recognizing that sign if we saw it. Uh, him not Indian. Not a... Well, how can you tell? When Indian walk, him point toe in. When white man walk, him point toe out. And the toes of these moccasin prints are pointed out. Ah, Oh, but who'd want to do a thing like that? The same gang who've been making trouble for the telegraph line since Tom Case was given the job laying wire. They probably hired renegade Indians. Ah, uh, gang tried to delay him, make him lose contract. Well, they did delay the crew a little by blowing up those poles. And if Tom Case doesn't lay the last stretch of wire in Canyon City, by noon tomorrow, Rocky Hall will take over. Tom can replace the blown up poles. He isn't stopped yet. You think that gang will try something else? I think so, Dan. That Rocky Hall gang won't stop as long as there's a chance. They're determined to make Tom void his contract. If we could only find out what their next move is to be. Maybe we can. Case insisted that Larson post a guard tonight. Larson say him stand guard himself? Yes, Toto. Larson is always on hand when something happens. Ah. I'm going to be on guard, too. I'm going to watch Larson. Oh, I can help you. And you'll stay with Tom Case. Oh. In a roundabout way, I'm going to let Larson hear that I'm watching him. As the Lone Ranger and Tonto lay watching in the darkness, a stranger came toward the camp and joined the guard, Larson. Bat, boys are all asleep. We'll shove on now. Whatever you say, Larson. Come on. Be ready for some fun. How's that? We're going to be followed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that Lone Ranger, the critter with a mask, is watching us. Well, you found that out, huh? He'll follow us. We'll lead him right to the middle of things. In anticipation of the plans ahead, the Lone Ranger had his face disguised. He walked slowly through the darkness. He saw the two ahead turn a corner in the trail, and for a moment a steep cliff shut them off from view. Then he too rounded the curve and... Reach! Get them up. Reach for the sky. I couldn't reach it no matter how I tried, Larson. Oh, smooth one, huh? I'll make one fast move and we drill you. There's men on all sides of you. All right, boys, close in. We got the Lone Ranger. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. The Lone Ranger has been captured by the Larson gang. Gagged and tightly bound, he was taken to the gang's headquarters in a cave where his mask was removed. But the gang did not know that the Lone Ranger was wearing a disguise and that even unmasked, his identity was still unknown to them. Most of the gang then departed, leaving only Bat and Larson to guard their captive. This is our last chance to ruin the case with the telegraph company, Larson. Slip up this time, we're cooked. You're not telling me anything I don't know. Rocky Hall only pays off for results, not alibis. We've been handing out a lot of the last. I ain't seen you produce much in the way of results. Meaning what, Bat? Meaning the boys were all set to do some real damage to the line when you fumbled the deal. I fumbled it? If you'd taken care of the kid when you did Jeb, you wouldn't have had the Lone Ranger and Case's men on your necks. Well, I didn't know the kid was there. You should have told me. I'm advising you to make sure where you stand before you start shooting off your mouth, Savvy. Oh, there ain't no sense of you getting riled. I just mean to point out that the boys are might suspicious they won't get paid. They'll get paid. Not unless we prevent Tom Case from laying that wire in Canyon City by noon, they won't. None of us will. Case won't plant that last pole in Canyon City by noon. No, no. What's to stop him? Plenty. When's the last time it rained? Mm, must be a month or more. Why? The prairie grass between the camp and town is mighty dry. So dry it just about crackles in your fingers. Mm, what of it? It'd make mighty quick burning fodder for a fire. Prairie fire? Yeah. With a breeze blowing it right down Case's line of telegraph poles. Them dry timbers would burn like paper. And the construction gang would be so busy trying to put out the flames they wouldn't have time to push the wire through to Canyon City. Now you're talking sense. And Rocky Hall would take over Case's contract. And we'd be paid. Paid plenty. Eh, still, it ain't a sure thing. What do you want, a written guarantee? Yeah, with all the cash we've got at stake, there ain't no sense in taking chances. What are you getting at? While the boys and me were riding here to the hideout, we spotted a herd of buffalo. Buffalo? Yeah. Big head of them. They were grazing near the upper end of the canyon. What of it? Well, buffalo are mighty unreasonable critters when you get them going. Oh. You mean a stampede? Yeah, why not? With a prairie fire licking at their heels, they'll run just the way we want them to. Yeah. Straight for the construction camp, I bet. Sure. And smash things up proper, including the men that'll try to fight the fire. That's a ticket. Now, me and the boys will take care of the stampede. You ought to have a cinch setting a fire in that dry grass. Yeah. But wait till the flames are high, wide, and handsome before you stampede the buffalo. Just to make sure there'll be plenty at their heels to keep them running. Tom Cass won't have a chance. I don't aim for him to have any. I took plenty from that hombre when I was pretending to be his gang boss. Now it's my turn to dish it out. Well, what about the Lone Ranger? I'm saving him for afterwards. I don't savvy. What's the matter with putting a six-gun to his head right now? Oh, it's too easy, Bat. Too quick. And too ordinary a death for the Lone Ranger. No, Bat, I've got plans for him. I want to get a lot of satisfaction out of the way he dies. We dies? Yeah. Slow and easy. To make the pleasure last. <laughs> Early the next morning, Larson and Bat and their men rode swiftly off to attend to their plan. Behind them in the cave, they left the Lone Ranger, still tightly bound, but with his gag removed, guarded by two of the outlaws. Seated under a large hole which tunneled through the rocky roof of the cave to the outside air, the two outlaws played cards to pass the time. How many cards, Leaf? I'll stick to what I got. <laughs> Standing pat, huh? This must be your lucky hand. It better be. Yeah, dealer takes two. You open, Leif. I. What's the matter? Thought I heard footsteps. Yeah, you must have the willies, Leif. Nobody'd come snooping around here. And if they did, they wouldn't find the cave. It's too well concealed. Uh, I guess you're right. Sure. Go ahead, place your bet. I'll bet this. Yeah, I'll raise you. And I'll raise you. Listen. You hear that? Sure, but... Sounded like it came from just outside the hole that tunnels through this roof. You're loco, Leif. Keep on and you'll give yourself goose pimples. I don't scare easy. Tell you I did hear something. Have it your way. But are you staying in this game or aren't you? Of course I'm staying. I'll raise you. Are <laughs> you talking? I'll raise you again. <laughs> Well, 
while Leif and Dean concentrated on their poker game, secure in the knowledge that no one could enter the cave without their knowing it, the Lone Ranger heard a faint signal. That's Tonto. He looked about, ready to distract the attention of the guards if Tonto appeared. He saw nothing. Then he heard a faint scratching and looked overhead. He saw a noose dangling from the hole in the roof of the cave. And then it dropped. Tell you what, that's... Speak out of the Make a move and that rope will be jerked tighter. Please. Good work, Tuttle. Speak out of Get me out of this. Stand where you are. Dean, untie my hands. Stay on the job, Tuttle. Be ready to pull up. I'm being ready. You won't, don't pull it tighter. I'll strangle. That depends on your partner. Get these ropes off. Please, I, I... Don't stand there gawking. Do what he says. If I so much as move, I'll find myself swinging with a busted neck. But the boss... Hurry. He's drawing it tighter. Come on, get this rope cut. I... I will. Hold still now. There. Yeah, that's better. Now, what do you... Come on down, Tonto. I'll take care of this one. Oh, he can't pay you. He fix you in a hurry. Good work, Tonto. Huh? Take those ropes. We'll tie these two. Let me fix them. I thought you'd be here sooner, Kimasabi. Me wait. Make sure. Gang not watch. We've little time left. Hurry with that roping. We've got to turn a stampede. Uh, this fellow all tied. Good. Now, so is this one. Where are the horses? Uh, them here. Outside cave. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Follow me, Tonto. There's a lot to do. Easy, big fella. <laughs> Come on, Silver! Come on, Scout! Concealed by the tall, dry prairie grass not far from Canyon City, Larson's hard, thin mouth smirked with amusement as he watched Tom Case's construction crew approach the town from the valley below. For a moment, he let his eyes play over the scene the first division of men digging the post holes, the second cutting the poles and setting them in place, and the third stringing the wire so eagerly awaited in Canyon City. Then he struck a match and lighted the prairie grass. The dry brush caught flame quickly and soon was ablaze. Running from one spot to another, Larson set fire to more and more of the brush until a curtain of flame leaped along the prairie and bucked by a high wind crackled down the slope toward the construction camp. <laughs> It'll take a smarter man than Tom Case to stop this blaze. If it can't be stopped, wind's taking it down the hill right toward the camp. Them telegraph poles will be burned like matches. Supply wagons, too. And all the timber and wires they freighted over the mountain to finish the job. After this blaze, Case won't have anything left. There goes Batten, the boys, stampeding the buffalo. Driving them right in line with the fire. The buffalo will really step when they feel that blaze heat in their heels. Well, this is where Tom Case loses his contract to Rocky Hall. That and me settle for a nice lump of cash. <laughs> Down the valley toward the arroyo which rutted it and the construction camp on the opposite side thundered the shaggy mane buffalo, leaving the now roaring inferno of the prairie fire behind. Then the desperate construction crew saw the familiar figures of the Lone Ranger and Tonto riding furiously to their camp in advance of the onrushing tide. They raced to the rear of the herd of cattle which the camp tended for beef and fired their guns to stampede the steers. What are you aiming to do? Stampede the cattle, Case. You men, over here! I don't savvy. Drive the cattle away from the camp. The buffalo may follow their lead and swing in behind them. If it works, I'll sidestep my telegraph line. Our only chance. Herd them, boys! Drive them! Here come the buffalo! Stay clear! Hello! Uh the buffalo are driving in. Look, they're turning with the steers. They're changing course. Uh, Have a damn pole safe from Buffalo now. We've other work to do. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Raising back to the camp, the Lone Ranger led the construction crew to a stream which flowed nearby. Listening to the masked man's quickly outlined plan as the prairie fire roared down the valley toward the camp, the men sank charges of blasting powder into speedily dug holes in the bank, which formed a juncture between the stream and the arroyo. Then a series of explosions rent the air. Water rushed through the juncture to flood the arroyo, which gutted the bottom of the valley. For a moment, the flames of the prairie fire seemed to suspend themselves in the bank of the arroyo in an attempt to bridge the water to the construction camp on the opposite shore, then slowly simmered out at the water's edge. Who 
Who's that coming? The gang who's responsible for setting the fire and stampeding the buffalo case. Ah, uh, them ride plenty fast? Yeah, that's what I can't figure out. They look like somebody's chasing them. The sheriff is chasing them with a posse. Look, the gang's turning off. They'll get away. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Come on, boys. That's the Rocky Hole gang. After them, Hole Goes right in the head us off. Bust them, them in front of us with the sheriff behind. We haven't got a chance. They won't take me without a fight. Yeah, me either. I want you, Larson. The Lone Ranger. You get you, Down the engine. How in thunder? You won't take me. Drop that gun. I'm shedding lead at you. Oh, wing me. You not shoot either. Nah, stay he away, you. No. You want another? No, oh, no, I give in. I've had enough. Tell your gang to surrender, Bat. Go in, boys. They got us surrounded. Same. I got plenty of scores to settle with you two. You, Larson, and Bert. Not as many as I have, Sheriff. Ask him who put him up to all the low-down tricks they pulled on us since we started to lay wire for this telegraph line. I don't have to ask him, Case. I know it's the Rocky Hall outfit, but they got more to answer to than that. Murder. Murder? Yeah. Killing old Jeb Collins in the telegraph office. I had nothing to do with that. That was Bat's work. Well, you're double-crossing scum. That's you enough out of you two. Uh, in Case... You don't want to lose that contract to Rocky Hall. You better start bringing that telegraph wire into Canyon City. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you heard him, boys. Get moving. <laughs> Reckon we got enough evidence to a crooked play to blast the Rocky Hall outfit out of business, eh? <laughs> you know, we can thank the Lone Ranger for that, Sheriff. Yes, and Tonto. Yeah, and young Dan Reed... He's the one who rode to me with the Lone Ranger's plan to surprise them coyotes from behind. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.